Greetings, and welcome back to Mavanwinia's studio, here in Leitrim's Iron Mountains. If you're new here, my name is Harriet, and today I will be sharing a short Indian ink and watercolour time-lapse in my sketchbook. This piece is a small selection of shell motifs, as I'm working towards making a sticker collection with some of my mermaid artwork. I felt it would be nice to include some sea motifs within these sets, which I will be making in a future video. With my mechanical pencil, I have drawn a number of different types of seashells here, of which I'm going to outline in Indian ink with my glass dip pen. Then I will be painting the details and the colours with the Kuritaki Ganzai Tambi watercolour set. Ganzai is the name given to traditional Japanese watercolours which have different ingredients from traditional Western watercolours. I haven't tried this type of paint before, so this will be a first impression video. The inks I'm going to be using are by Winsor and Newton. These are formulated from a series of soluble dyes mixed with a shellac binder, which makes them fast drying, transparent and water resistant when dry. Shellac is a type of resin secreted by the female lac bug on the trees in the forests of India and Thailand. Once it's scraped off and collected, it is processed and sold as dry flakes, which is dissolved into alcohol to make a liquid shellac that is added to inks like these. Indian ink can get quite gloopy when it starts to dry, so when working with a dip pen, you will want to momentarily rinse the nib if you feel it starting to clog to keep your line work consistent. For careful cleaning with the fine glass nib, I use a little ceramic bowl, which I have placed a thick piece of black foam sponge in the bottom. It is then filled with water until the sponge is completely waterlogged. This serves as a soft padding to gently rinse and clean the glass tip, perfect for quickly changing the color of your ink as you go. The colors I'm using here are the nut brown, the classic blue, and the peat brown. I'm just swatching them out onto a small piece of watercolour paper to check the shades. First the nut brown, which I felt was a little more red than the peat brown, which seemed closer to a burnt umber. The blue ink is a classic blue, with the shade named simply as blue. It's the colour of traditional blue writing ink. I chose to use these colours as I felt they are the closest colouring of these shells, and I wanted to avoid harsh black outlines keeping this page of little shell pieces in line with the quality of my pre-existing mermaid artwork. Outlining my pencil sketches with ink allows me to redefine the sketch and add some sharper, more intricate details. The paints claim to have a good transparency and being transparent, I intend that some of these outlines will show through the paint. So I'm trying to be as tidy as I can first look at this paint set, it comes in this sleek and stylish green paper covered card box with gold embossed Japanese characters on the top. To me it immediately feels like something oriental and exotic. The pans are extra large, each measuring 4.5 by 2.5 centimeters. The large size is traditional to Ganzai paints, designed to fit the larger traditional Japanese paintbrushes. This is a 36 piece set. I read a little about these paints and I was excited to try them. Japanese Ganzai watercolour refers to this type of paint that differs from Western watercolours in a few ways. While Western watercolours is traditionally bound with gum Arabic, which comes from Sudan in Africa and would not have been a medium for a culture that didn't really have access to it until relatively recently in contrast to Britain in the Victorian and industrial age that had Africa as part of its trade routes. Traditionally, Ganzai is bound with a combination that can include glue, starch, beeswax, honey, sugar syrup, sugar or glycerin, depending on the colour pigments. The glue is made from concentrated collagen and gelatine that has been extracted from animal hides or fish skins through boiling. The company which makes this set is Kuritaki and was founded in 1902. Kuritaki has described this set as traditional Japanese watercolours and in the absence of a ingredients list, 
the Amazon product video by Kuratake, states that the pigments are kneaded together with resin, the resin perhaps being the concentrated collagen, which is also known as collagen resin. The glycerine then would prevent the resin from curing fully, allowing the paints to easily reconstitute in water, giving them their smooth, creamy, gelatinous liquidity. This would also mean that, despite some websites' claims, these paints may not be vegan, and nowhere on the packaging can I find where it states that they are. Alternatively, Kuritake may have developed some kind of water-soluble, synthetic resin that mimics the application and appearance of traditional watercolours. Regardless of the actual ingredients, the pigment and binder is mixed together and has been dried in the pans. These large square edged pans are called ganzai, and traditionally the ones that are the same type of paint but in round dishes are called tepatsu. They can also be formed into a sort of watercolour stick called boinogu. For all intents and purposes, these paints handle like any watercolour I've used, but their properties and finish is slightly different. They were originally developed for use on rice paper. I was a little concerned how some of the ingredients, such as the shellac in my Indian ink and the unknown resin ingredients in these paints would interact with each other. With traditional Western watercolours, the dry Indian ink is completely waterproof. And my suspicions were correct. The dry lines in the inks permeated and blended into the ganzai. This was not too much of an issue, as I had chosen ink colours which already fit the colouring of my shells. However, if I had done my outlining with black ink, it may have drastically impacted the vibrancy of my colours. After inking my shells, I wanted to start by getting a feel for the paints. I began trying them on a little square of watercolour paper, starting with the shimmery satin colours at the bottom of the palette. A gold? a blush gold and a white gold, which is more of a pearlescent white and absolutely beautiful. There is no chalkiness to this paint, it almost has a lacquered appearance. The colour pigments are very smooth and a little goes a long way, highly saturated, there's no granulation at all, so this tells me the pigment is very high quality or perhaps it's partially dye based. The paint is extremely creamy and smooth with super high dispersal rate when combined with water, making them ready to use immediately without the need to soak the pan before they are ready to be painted with or to get onto the brush. There is a difference in the feel of the texture between these and other watercolours. It's the smooth texture and the way the paint seems to sit on the surface of the page instead of being absorbed so quickly. In its most saturated consistency, it has a gelatinous quality. Even wet activated paint in the pan seems to consistently even itself out after your brush has disturbed it, like it was runny honey leveling itself out. This consistency seems to allow perhaps more time to work with the paint than with Western watercolours. I decided to make use of the blank paint chart provided on the inside of the lid with the names in English and the Japanese character of each colour. Here I made swatches of all the colours as many of them look darker or completely different in the pans to what they look like once applied to paper. I wanted to do a bit of gradation on this chart so I went across the text as well, focusing the saturation on the blank areas and washing it out so you could still see the names of the paint through the transparent watery part of my swatch. When painting my shells, I couldn't resist using the pearlescent white. It gave the shells a beautiful mother of pearl feel. This shimmery satin finish is stunning. It's hard to see on camera, but I'll move it in the light towards the end of the video. The pigment is very vibrant and I found it very easy to achieve flat colours. When used wet in wet, the pigment disperses evenly across the watery surface and created fine edge lines of saturated colour at the edge of the seepage area. It was also very easy to build up in thin layers of transparent colour once the layer below was dry. I found these paints super easy to lift. You can almost entirely erase whole areas of paint with water and an intentional scrub with a clean brush and some paper towel. This means a freedom of play without concerning yourself too much about making mistakes. 
This paint is also very easy to reactivate and pick up. Once it's dry, you can re-wet it and pick up from where you were. It was very easy to add water in to the dry paint and create beautiful watery effects as the paint dispersed effortlessly into the water. They have great control and mix perfectly with the pearlescent paint as well. I'm having no trouble whatsoever with these paints so far and I'm finding them fun to use. They have the feel of a very high quality and it says in their description that they are light fast so this would make them artist quality paints. I do find that there is a shine to them and when the paint is used in any kind of thickness it does leave a sheen on top. It's almost like a lacquered paint. You can see that very clearly as well on my swatches where the pigment was more saturated. The sheen was not as visible on the watery less saturated areas. So depending on how you work with these paints, your finished artwork is going to have some different kind of surface quality across it. Some of the detailed areas where perhaps you may have used a high pigmented line work. It's going to have a shine where more watery thin areas and washes are going to be much less lacquered and more matte appearing. Personally, I like this kind of tactile quality. But if this is an issue for you, I suppose you could put some kind of watercolour spray varnish over your finished piece and that would add a consistent gloss or matte sheen over the whole piece. The control of this paint is as good as any watercolour I've used. But I'm noticing that yes, the dry ink lines that I put down are dispersing into the Ganzai. Not a huge amount, but there is definitely some movement, especially in that blue ink. The line work softened a bit, and the watercolour pulled out some of the ink pigment and interacted to change the colour ever so slightly on the paints. This does not happen with Western watercolours. I think it's because the binder used in these paints is similar composition to the shellac binders used in the ink. I'm pleased so far with these shells. Some I like more than others. I'd like to perhaps make a few more pages of them and going forward from here, introduce some more rainbow colored shells with a fantasy feel. And this will give me more options when later designing my mermaid sticker collections. We're coming to the end of my time lapse now and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Do have a wonderful and inspiring week and I hope to see you all again soon for another video. Bye bye.